We can speak now to uh, Jana, who is from uh, Erpin, um, and we're going to talk to her through a translator. Uh, Jana, just tell us first of all, why did you come to Romania? Why did you come to Romania? Because it was close to our border. It was close to our border. Because I want to to back to our our home when the war is over. It's so close to Ukrainian border. It's why we decided to go to Romania. Okay. Would they would you consider going to somewhere like the UK? Are you thinking about going to Poland or to another country? You know, we don't think for this. We just we don't have enough time. We just we don't have enough time. We just we just cross the border and we would like to back home. It's what's my reasons. Main main goal to back home. For is for you know we are waiting when the war is will over finish. Talking to you now from a sports hall that's been commandeered to 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 gather all this aid from around Romania that's been brought here and from around Europe. It's being collected here, given to people on the border, to uh, people who are fleeing conflict on the border, and also uh, taken into Ukraine for people who are who are trying to escape the conflict inside. We can actually get a little bit more of an idea of what is going on here with Maris and Vitali, who are who are I should add Vitali, you're from Ukraine? Yes, I'm from Ukraine, thank you. you. Yeah, and Maris, you're from Latvia? I'm Latvian from Bulgaria. Why did you want to help? What made you same story. I was uh, reading all the news, basically. Everyone was reading the news, and at some point you just you want to do something. I came to the border with the idea I'm going to help a little bit driving people. Yeah. Started with driving people a little bit, hearing their stories and seeing, like, uh, there's a lot of things you can do here on the border. Translate. I'm speaking Russian, so I'm kind of helping, helping with that. Most of the people speak Russian when they come from Ukraine, so they are kind of happy to hear the language and kind of ex explain all these things. Yeah. Uh, English is also like something that they don't usually speak, so it's kind of hard for them to get involved. If somebody, well, in the Romanian border, also kind of, yeah, the language is, is okay now. At the first it was like, okay, English, somebody spoke English, somebody spoke a specific dialect of Ukrainian, sometimes they don't always understand each other, so. Russian language is super appreciated on the border to explain to people. Yeah. Essentially, a lot of the aid that comes in, it's separate. You know, people have just kind of cobbled it together, toiletries in, in, in the need. And what he's done is he's, he's made little baby kits and put them into boxes. And on the boxes, he's labeled it in Ukrainian, in Russian and in Romanian what is inside the box, which really helps with the authorities. So they don't need to open every box and look inside. They know what's inside it. It's written in three different languages. He's really thought about it, gone into a lot of detail, and it's really helped with the humanitarian effort here. So lots of people like Vince, like Maris, like Vitali, people from all across the world and from the UK as well, coming together. And these are the kind of places, these are the kind of efforts that really lift your spirits. It, you know, in stark contrast to the stories that we hear from many refugees, which are just frankly, you know, heartbreaking. Just to explain where we are, because you're probably wondering, we're in the back garden of a hostel that's uh, owned by an English man, and he's come back from Bristol to reopen it in the winter. He closes it, goes back to Bristol normally in the winter, but he's come back to reopen it to try and help the Ukrainian refugees. Um, so this is the hostel just behind us, and the man himself is uh, Rob, Rob Larkham, who uh, is the uh, owner of uh, Cobb Wob Hostel. That's Cobb right, Wob isn't hostel. it? Yes, that's right. Um, we've had this hostel going for about 20 years now, and we came back about two weeks ago. Um, we've had several Ukrainian refugees come come through and um, we've got a number of English volunteers here as well um, and they are sort of staying and distributing food into the lorries and getting medication and they're raising money in the UK at the moment so if you see anything that people who are small organizations who are trying to raise quite a lot of money then it's a good place to donate to be honest what sort of changes have you had to make to the uh, reopening the hostel at such short notice that must have been quite a challenge well it, it, yeah, it sort of has because the whole heating system here runs on wood and so we had to buy in quite a lot of wood 
Um, we had to change quite a lot of the mattresses. We've actually got new mattresses on the beds now. Um, and, you know, there's also a question of having food and stuff like that. Though, as I said, people have donated quite a lot of money, so we've actually been made, able to manage buying in the wood and all the other stuff that we need, really. Yeah, and the town has really, really... I hear there's been a big um, kind of impetus in the town. You were telling me about a restaurant earlier. Yes, that's right, uh, Finn's Bar in the middle of town. Uh, they're giving out th um, free meals to Ukrainians. Again, they've sort of um, raised money in Holland, and every day, I think it is now, people can go there at lunchtime and have free food. Um, and so many people in this town have opened up their um, accommodations. Uh, the hotels are offering free beds. Um, it's been quite amazing, considering it's such a sleepy little town. They've done amazingly well.